Okay, so in this video we're going to talk about head and tail. Now the head command will display data from the top of the file and it defaults to the first 10 lines. Now there are a number of options for head that I'll just quickly go through. So the dash C option, it prints the first K bytes of each file and if you have a leading minus sign it will print all but the last K bytes of file, K being whatever you type. Um, the dash N will print the first K lines instead of the first 10. So you can put any number there that you want and it will print that many instead of 10. If you have a minus sign in front of the number, it will print all but the last K lines of the file. Uh, the dash Q will never print header giving file names. And the dash V will um, always print the header giving file names. Uh, the main option that you will use is the dash n. Um, it's unlikely you'll normally use any of the other options, but they may be on the certification exam, so I've included them. Okay, now, tail is the opposite to head. It displays the bottom of the file, it defaults to the last 10 lines. Now, the first um, four options, the dash C, dash N, dash Q, and dash V are exactly the same, so I won't cover them again. Oh. <laughs> and I'll just quickly pause the slide because I, I've forgotten to put the data into the table. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, so with the dash F command, what it will do is it will output it will um, output the data as the file grows. So by default, every second, it will check the file for new data, and if there's new data, it will display it to the screen. Now the dash dash PID equals um, is a process ID. So if there's a particular program that outputs to a, to a log file, maybe there's more than one program that logs to that same log file, but you're only interested in one program, you can track it by the, P, the process ID. So when that program terminates, um, then this command will end and it will stop. It will stop checking the file every second for new for new output. Um, and the dash s um, is used with the dash f command, and you can change it to a different um, period. So by default, it's one second, but you could change it to two seconds or five seconds or ten seconds or whatever you want. Um, so that is um, the commands for tail. Um, now I'm going to demonstrate these commands for you. So I will um, switch over to a terminal window. Okay. So if we use the head command, um, let's say on this test.sh, you can see that it's showing three lines. Um, but if I do head on the bash history file, you can see that it'll be showing 10. Now, if I wanted to, I could go dash n five. Now it shows five. Or I can make dash n be one, and it shows one line. So dash n is the number of of lines that you want to display. Now, the other command was dash v. Um, now dash v, you can see that it adds this this header to the top. Now, if there's a header showing, the dash q will quiet the header. So you can see that I'm telling it to put a header there, then I'm telling it to quieten the header. And you can see that there is now no header, even though it's still got the dash V there. So the queue will, will remove any, any file headers that are displaying. Um, so now what we want to do is, um, is we want to, um, so I might clear the screen too for you. All right, so now if we use the dash C option, um, it will display how many bytes. So let's say we want to display 10 bytes of test.sh. You can see that it's displaying the first line, which just happens to be 
10 bytes, including a end of line character that you can't see there. But if I do nine bytes, you can see that it's joined up to this line here because there's no end of line character anymore because it was on the 10th byte. So it's now one line instead of it having an end of line character moving this to the next line. Um, if I make this say 50 bytes, you can see that it's showing part of the last line. So if I do ls-l on test.sh, you can see that the file is 59 bytes. So if I was to do 59, whoops, it shows the whole file. If I show 58, it will take the end of line character off and it this bit here will be part of the last line. So you can see that now that there's no end of line character telling it to go to the next line, so now everything's on the same line. So this um, dash C is basically um, is basically um, just showing how many bytes you specify. Now, one thing that I didn't show you, um, so so with um, the head command, if I do head test.sh, you can see that there's three lines, one, two, three. Now, if I use head dash n and I do minus one, it no longer shows the last line. So two would no longer show the last two lines of the file. So the minus basically says, show me everything except the last two two lines of the file. Um, and you can do the same with, let me just bring it up, with bytes. So you could say, don't show me the last 10 bytes of the file. So you can see here um, that it's still showing some. So if we went 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So if we said, don't show me the last 16 bytes, whoops, where are we? Maybe I did that wrong. Um, but if I say don't show me the last 20 bytes, it only shows me this bit. Um, I'm not the best with working with bytes. I don't really work with bytes, um, but you get the idea. Um, I don't think this is a command that you'll use all that much. I'm just covering it because it could be on the exam. Um, the main reason I think you'd want to use this is if you're passing data to a particular utility that required so many bytes of data, you might say, only give me this amount of many bytes of data. Um, but really the dash n command is the main one that you'll use. Let me just make sure that I've covered everything. Yes, I have. All right, so we've covered the dash c, the dash n, the quieting, the verbose, um, the new lines. Um, with both the normal number and the minus numbers. Okay, so now I'll clear the screen and let's look at tail. So what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to use vim to create a test I'll just call it log.test. Okay, so it's a blank file. Now, I'm just gonna call this line one, line two, line three, just so there's some data in there. Okay, so then we'll write the data. Okay, so I've just uh, did a bit of a test and updating the contents uh, inside Vim um, doesn't work so Vim holds the file open so the tail can't access it so I'll just close out of Vim um, but I'll just quickly show you tail by itself so if we go tail um, 
log.test, you can see it shows lines one, two, three. Um, if I do dash n2, that is showing me the last two lines, lines three and two. So all those options work the same, same so I'm not going to go over them um, just because it does the same except in reverse, so you can play with them yourselves. But I'm going to show you the dash f option on log dash, on log.test. So at the moment you can see you got one, two, three. So over here, if I go echo, say line four, and I append it three direction to log.test, you can see it pops up. And then there's another one and another one. So you can see that that is working quite nicely. As the file updates, it's displaying here for us. So this could be a program updating a log file, and you would see it as it, real time as it updates. So we'll close out of there. Um, now what I want to do is uh, we'll load Vim up over here and I'll open up a new tab, uh, Control Shift T. And what I want to do is PSA UX, I'll pipe it to grab and I want to filter on Vim. And that will get me the process ID of Vim. So over here you can see 1911 set, that's the process ID for Vim. So over here, if I go PID, whoops, I need dash dash, PID equals middle mouse button will paste the highlighted text from over here. And if I run that, it's running tail and it's basically saying only keep scanning the end of the file, like the file for changes for new, new lines while this process ID is running. So if I do echo t append it to log.test. You can see that it comes up and down here it's still running. I don't have access to the command line over here. This file is in, command is still running waiting for new, new um, data in that file. But if I come over here and I close Vim you can see I've got my command prompt back. And if I was to output more file data into the file, um, it's not updating because it's not running anymore. Um, so the other thing that I want to show you, um, let's say dash f log.test I'll pipe it to grab and I'll filter on the word Bob, for example. So over here, um, you can see that there's no output because there's nothing in the file with the word Bob. So if I echo t log.test, you can see nothing over here is updating. But if I have the word Bob test, it comes up. I could even have test Bob test and it'll come up because it's got the word Bob in there. Grep is filtering on Bob. But if I do the T, nothing happens, nothing happens. So the word Bob here could be anything. It could be in the grep that we're filtering. It could be an IP address. Maybe you're interested in a particular IP address that might be doing some, something suspicious. You could be interested in a particular event, maybe an access denied message or something like that, maybe. Um, but whatever you're interested in, you can filter it. And this tail command will still constantly update, but the grep command will filter it and basically only show you what you're interested in. So if you're on a server that's fairly active, you could be getting content flicking across all the time and it would just be too fast to see. But by filtering it on only what you're interested in, then it would become more, more usable. So that is pretty much everything that I wanted to cover with grep. Um, and I will end the video there.